you know, I've been, uh, I've been working on getting back into studying spiritual things, you know, and I, I call it that because everything else is just boring now, like, I don't, it can't hold my attention. If, uh, if it's not supernatural, if it doesn't have any, you know, anything like that in it, then I'm not really interested in it anymore, but, uh, anyway, I thought I would start sharing this. I find it, uh, I'm pretty awesome, really, because I read from the Message Bible, I suggest that uh, everyone should read this version, this translation. And if you do your research on it, it's closer to the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic than uh, King James, even. Uh, I, I, I shy away from King James. It don't make a whole lot of sense, you know what I mean? That that's a totally different dialect of of speaking, you know. We didn't we weren't there. We didn't know what the fads were, what the lingo was. Anyway, so this is uh Ecclesiastes and it's basically the life of Solomon, but it's not near all his life. But I've been doing a lot of studying about Solomon. You know, he, uh, you know, supposed to be the most intelligent or the most wisest and the richest and <clears throat> most amazing king over Israel and pretty much anywhere that ever lived, including like the king or the queen of Sheba that was around in his time as king of Israel and like queen of you know, Queen of Sheba was was a somebody. Uh, she visited Solomon and gave half of her kingdom, brought it with her, and gave it. And she was like, "Wow, everything that they said is true, except for it's twice as good as they said it was." You know. <clears throat> so in return, he doubled it and gave her double everything. You know that she gave him and this translation in the message bible is pretty good it's very enlightening and it puts things in perspective uh, you know the bible was written for you but it was not written to you so it's good to have an understanding of the way they spoke and their mannerisms and why they said certain things. So what this guy did is he took Greek and Hebrew and he used our American idioms and our way of speaking and the, you know, just generally the way that we converse as you would with anyone. And... I think he hit the nail right on the head. Guy did a really good job. Anyway, Message Bible. I'm just going to start reading. This is chapter 1. And I'll probably stop in between and say a thing or two or whatever. But verse 1 of chapter 1. Ecclesiastes. The Quester. These are the words of the Quester. David's son. And king in Jerusalem. <sighs> smoke. Nothing but smoke. That's what the quester says. There's nothing to anything. It's all smoke. What's there to show for a lifetime of work? A lifetime of working your fingers to the bone. <laughs> it's a pretty good uh, intro right there from the bat, huh? From the wisest man that ever lived. You know... God told Solomon, you've been a good king. You've taken care of my people. Name anything you want. I'll give it to you. And he said, wisdom. That was his, his answer to God. 
anything that you want, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. I want to know how to lead your people in the way that they should go. And God says, because this is what you've asked for, I'm going to give you wisdom and everything else. So, you know, he wasn't no dummy. <clears throat> That's for sure. One generation, this is continuing on. One generation goes its way. The next one arrives, but nothing changes. It's business as usual for old planet Earth. The sun comes up and the sun goes down. Then it does it again and again. The same old round. The wind blows south. The wind blows north. Around and around it blows. Blowing this way, then that. The whirling, erratic wind. All the rivers flow into the sea, but the sea never fills up. The rivers keep flowing to the same old place and then start all over and do it again. Everything's boring, utterly boring. No one can find any meaning in it. Boring to the eye, boring to the ear. What was will be again. What happened will happen again. There's nothing new on this earth. Year after year, it's the same old thing. Does someone call out, Hey, this is new. Don't get excited. It's the same old story. Nobody remembers what happened yesterday. And the things that will happen tomorrow, nobody will remember them either. Don't count on being remembered. That's the first paragraph. You know, like, there is nothing new on this earth and they're proving it. For instance, the... <clears throat> what would you call it? The practice of healing a person's body through light and sound, uh, different vibrations of light and sound. And when you find the two and they match, it'll destroy anything inside your body without hurting you. And it just destroys it. Just It's like breaking atoms. <laughs> you know, like what an atom bomb does. Continuing on. I've seen it all. Call me the quester. I've been king over Israel and Jerusalem. I looked most carefully into everything. Searched, all, searched it all out what is done here on this earth. And let me tell you, there's not much to write home about. God hasn't made it easy for us. <clears throat> I've seen it all, and it's nothing but smoke. Smoke. And spitting into the wind. Life's a corkscrew that can't be straightened. A minus that won't add up. I said to myself, I know more and I'm wiser than anyone before me in Jerusalem. I've stockpiled wisdom and knowledge. What I finally concluded is that so-called wisdom and knowledge are mindless and witless. Nothing but spitting into the wind. Much learning earns you much trouble. The more you know, the more you hurt. I thought it was the more you know, the more you grow. Maybe that's still true. But he's absolutely right. The more you know, the more it does hurt. Really. Like, the more I know about a person, like, deep unsearchable things that nobody should have a way of knowing but the person that's giving me the feeling man most of the time I don't want to know most of the time I don't want to know that's for real <laughs> I'm going to move on to uh, chapter 2 I said to myself let's go for it Experiment with pleasure. Have a good time. But there was nothing to it. Nothing but smoke. What do I think of the fun-filled life? Insane. Insane. My verdict on the pursuit of happiness? Who needs it? With the help of a bottle of wine and all the wisdom I could muster, I've tried my level best to penetrate the absurdity of life. I wanted to get a handle on anything useful we mortals might 
do during the years we spend on this earth. I never said no to myself. Oh, I did great things. Built houses, planted vineyards, designed gardens and parks, and planted a variety of fruit trees in them. Made pools of water to irrigate the grooves, groves of trees. I bought slaves, oh, male and female, who had children, giving me even more slaves. Then I acquired a large herd and flocks larger than any before me in Jerusalem. I piled up silver and gold, loot from kings and kingdoms. I gathered a chorus of singers to entertain me with song, and most exquisite of all pleasures, voluptuous maidens for my bed. <laughs> I like Solomon. Uh, oh, how I prospered. I left all my predecessors in Jerusalem far behind left them behind in the dust. What's more, I kept a clear head through it all. Everything I wanted, I took. I never said no to myself. I gave in to every impulse, held nothing back. I sucked the marrow out of pleasure and out of every task, my reward to myself for a hard day's work. The next paragraph is entitled, I Hate Life. Then I took a good look around at everything I'd done, looked at all the sweet and hard work, but when I looked, I saw nothing but smoke, smoke and spitting into the wind. There was nothing to any of it, nothing. And then I took a hard look at what's smart and what's stupid. What's left to do after you've been king? That's a hard act to follow. You just do what you can, and that's it. But I did see that it's better to be smart than stupid, just as light is better than darkness. Even so, though the smart ones see where they're going and the stupid ones grope in the dark, they're all the same in the end. One fate for all, and that's it. When I realized that my fate's the same as the fool's, I had to ask myself, so why bother being wise? It's all smoke, nothing but smoke. The smart and the stupid both disappear out of sight. In a day or two, they're both forgotten. Yes, both the smart and the stupid die, and that's it. I hate life. As far as I can see, what happens on earth is a bad business. It's smoke and spitting into the wind. And I hated everything I'd accomplished and accumulated on this earth. I can't take it with me. No, I have to leave it to whoever comes after me. Whether they're worthy or worthless. And who's to tell? They'll take over the earthly results of my intense thinking and hard work. Smoke. That's when I called it quits. Gave up on anything that could be hoped for on this earth. What's the point of working your fingers to the bone if you hand over what you worked for to someone who never lifted a finger for it? Smoke. That's what it is. A bad business from start to finish. So what do you get from a life of hard labor? Pain and grief from dusk to dawn. Never a decent night's rest. Nothing but smoke. The best you can do with your life is have a good time and get by the best you can. The way I see it, that's it. Divine fate. Whether we feast or fast, it's up to God. God may give wisdom and knowledge and joy to his favorites, but sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Nothing but smoke and spitting in the wind. That's the end of chapter two. Uh, you know, <clears throat> let's just look through this. He planted vineyards, designed gardens and parks, and planted a variety of trees, made pools of water, so he, he dug 
you know, lakes and rivers and, you know, irrigation systems. And he had generations of slaves and uh, very well paid slaves. Uh, he took very good care of them. They were more like skilled laborers. Uh, and he did. The facts are there. I mean, you can you can look it up on, you know, uh, pagan. <coughs> you know, they have their. And that's pretty much what you got here. You have, pagan. And not pagan, in in the whole, scheme of things. That's really what it is. You are, Jewish or pagan. That's how it was for a long time, and that's still pretty much how it is. You're either that, which is God, or you are that, which is not God. You know, the darkness, uh, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. You know, what else is there, really? Anyways, uh, he had choirs and his voluptuous maidens for his bed left all of his predecessors in the dust and there's a pretty good you know i mean david was his dad king david you know he wasn't a nobody they still sing songs about david you know and he did way more than david did uh you know not to mention that he was a bastard child of Bathsheba, you know, so David killed his dad, you know, pretty much. That's how the story is read. Sends his, you know, gets his, uh, gets this woman pregnant, and then, if, anyway, you should, you should read up on it, what he, you know, anyways, so he had a pretty sketchy life right from the get, and, uh, his brother before him that would have been born, God said no, because you killed that man. You can't have this child that's the bastard child. So, I guess Solomon wasn't a bastard child. He was blood child of, you know, however many wives, I don't know at that time, but Ultimately, I think he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, so there had to be quite a few children running around, seeing as how they didn't use birth control. <laughs> and populating the earth was kind of a thing back then. Uh, now we're trying to depopulate, but anyways. It says, and then I took a good look at everything. I looked at all the sweet and hard work, but when I looked, I saw nothing but smoke and spitting into the wind. You, you ever get smoke in your eye like you play pool or something? You know how... Smoke. You know, that's become a, a common term, uh, a slang term in the street, you know. Uh, somebody... Oh, somebody says something that gets you caught up or they just manipulate you into a situation where you look bad or whatever, you know, that's like uh, they're, they're smoking your game, they're, they're getting you busted, they're blowing your cover, they are, you know, basically betraying you. So, I've never purposely spit into the wind, but I have done it. On accident, especially in these West Texas winds around here, it does happen. That's just nasty, you know, it's just nasty, it just smells funky, you know. I'm sure I'm not the only person that has had to experience that, and obviously <laughs> he did too, so. And a fool... And the wise both end up in the same place in the end. That's something to think about, you know? The smart and the stupid both disappear out of sight 
in a day or two, they're both forgotten. Hmm. Is it really a big deal to be remembered? You're not going to care. promise you that. You're not going to be thinking about it. I hate life. As far as I can see, what happens on Earth is a bad business. It's smoke and spitting into the wind. It's betrayal. And it's nasty. And it's your own spit. It's your own spit. <clears throat> he called it quits. He said, to hell with this. <laughs> what would you do if that was you? Anyways, I thought maybe I would start something like this just because that's really, really the message I want to get out there is the truth and the author of it. Uh, well, anyway, I appreciate y'all letting me read you bedtime story. Deuces!